Hello everyone and welcome to Harvest Intercontinental Church Alney. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 16 to 18 tells us to rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Prayer is one of the most essential Christian practices, and here at Harvest, we've made that a priority. Here's the prayer schedule at Harvest Only. Beginning March, the first Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of every month will be a time of prayer and fasting. For prayer, we'll gather on our prayer line at the usual morning prayer time from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m., and in the evening from 7.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. The suggested fasting method is the Daniel Fast. That's fruit and veggies for each meal or one meal per day. Outside of the three days of prayer and fasting, we'll meet daily on the prayer line for a time of prayer we call Morning Glory. 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. through Monday through Saturday and 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. on Sundays. Finally, we have Harvest Fire, a time of corporate prayer on the first Friday of every month. As you can see, there are many opportunities to get involved in the prayer life of the church. And we encourage you to join in person or virtually each week. Have you gotten your copy of The New You, the latest book from Bishop Johnson? We hope so, because Bishop Johnson will be signing books today, immediately after the service in the library. If you haven't gotten your book yet, no worries. You can still pick up a copy in the lobby next door and have it signed. This book systematically explains what you need to do to get off of life's roller coaster of disappointment and unrealized dreams. It will help you to be the new creation that you were destined to be. It will also teach you how to renew your mind, change your behavior, and live life according to God's destiny for you. Make sure to grab one or two extra books for a friend. I'm Pastor Peabody, and today I have a testimony about, you know, my brother. Recently, I think it was early January or so, there was a snowstorm, and if everybody remembered, uh, on the highway, somewhere in Virginia, oh man, people were there, cars stuck, people just stuck on the highway. My brother was driving from, I believe it was Philadelphia, to Stafford, Virginia. And um, he was following his GPS, and he said that normally he will follow the GPS from wherever he's coming from until he gets to a familiar place, and then he will stop following the uh, GPS and take the route that he normally will use. But somehow, um, the GPS began to take him on a very unfamiliar route. And for some reason, he just decided to follow it. He said he, it was a strange thing, and he says to follow it. And he began to follow it. Um, instead of breaking out of his, and going on the normal routes, he just followed this place. And two times he second guessed himself, stopped to make sure he was on the right road. And to make things worse, his wife was like, hey, why are you trying to figure out a new route home? It's cold. Let's try to just take what we know. He kept his cool and let's follow his guts and the GPS. And it was where they reached home that his daughters informed him that there was no electricity at home and that there was a terrible traffic on the highway. And if he had not followed his guts, they would have been in traffic for 24 hours. For a snowstorm that dumped whiteout conditions, Thousands of drivers are seeing red. Multiple crashes along Interstate 95 shutting down the major corridor. I'm headed to Georgia. I live in South Carolina. I was going back to work. We're on our way to Florida. Crippling a transportation system to a complete standstill. Drivers were forced to wait. I've just been sitting here since 715 last night. A day, 24 hours. Still haven't moved. We've been stuck for 19 hours on 95. Mark Meharian and his wife Thanks. questioned if anything more could have been done to prevent the backlog. In the cold, they slept in their car overnight. They will have run out of gas. They have been in the cold without food, water, and restroom. Going home was an old thing. If you can remember something that Bishop said in the beginning of the year, that God is doing a new thing. It was a familiar thing, but God chose to do a new thing, taking an unfamiliar route to get him home. This year, in 2022, 
Let's follow the Spirit it's leading. It might be, you know, a new way, but just hang tight, just like my brother did. Despite his wife, despite the, the unfamiliar surroundings, but God was taking him to a familiar place, home. Pastor Peabody, thank you. That's all for today. Please scan this QR code to be connected to our Next Steps Hub, where you can learn about upcoming events, give online, submit a testimony or prayer request, and really connect with the life of the church. Have a great week, Harvesters.